Hello and welcome. This is another live edition of Travel Radio Podcast, and this is sort of an experiment and a surprise. But before I get into today's really exciting topic, just want to go through one announcement, and that is on the past videos, you've seen an announcement for a masterclass that I'm running with the wonderful Nicole Barrett, who is excellent at marketing. And she and I are both uh, veterans in the travel podcasting space. So we're running this masterclass to help you decide if podcasting is a good option for you. If it's not a good option for you, get you through your first episode, get you some equipment and um, yeah, help you have a plan for longevity. So there's the URL on the screen and this is what the website looks like. And that is the travelpreneuracademy.com forward slash podcast masterclass. And now the topic of today's live is the top three reasons to visit Scandinavia with a return guest, Teresa Chu Bermudez. Hi. Welcome to the podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. And this is absolutely a surprise because I have not gotten camera ready, but You're you awesome. know, I, I will just say this is the worst I'll ever look. So any future lives and videos that we do, <laughs> it's going to be better than this. It's not going to be any worse than this. <laughs> if this is the worst you look, I mean, you are winning at worst. So <laughs> you. you're, you're fantastic. Now, um, before we get started on today's topic, would you just take a minute to introduce yourself? I am Teresa Chu Bermudez. I own Get Out Custom Travels, and uh, I specialize in custom itineraries uh, to Europe and Asia. But obviously, I have um, I also do cruises and all inclusives. Living in Florida, it's kind of something that a lot of folks like to experience. So. Um, I live in sunny Tampa, Florida, and this is my fifth year in business, I think. It'll oh, be great. five years within the next two months. Oh, nice. Okay, and we'll just do a little shot of your website. There it is. And uh, you can't see the URL, but it is getoutcustomtravels.com. And then um, now I, I told you kind of that I was going to experiment on you today, and you said, I love mm. surprises. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I said, okay, you pick your top three reasons to visit Scandinavia, and I'll pick my top three reasons to visit Scandinavia. But I somewhat lied to you because instead we're going to play a game, and then you'll get oh to give, <laughs> and then you'll get to give your three reasons. And I'll tell you why this is exciting because you love Game of Thrones, and we're going to play Game of Thrones. Oh, Scandinavia. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> You're going to do fine. Okay, here we go. And it's not changing. The next thing. I was gonna say, Hold on. I was like, is there a question? Or there is a question, that? I promise. Okay, I know what I need to do. There we go. They can't grow, but they are obsessed with it. Name that drink. Uh, Coffee. The answer is coffee. Yes. <laughs> that is true. That they are, you know, a huge coffee drinking region, and apparently it's light coffee that they enjoy the most. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, here we go. Moving right along. Okay, what is fika? Can you use it in a sentence? Hint: It's something that you do. Ooh, is it going to a coffee shop and getting a pastry? Ooh, nice. Answer, in Sweden, fika is the tradition of drinking coffee with friends, taking a work break, snacking, but always with coffee, sometimes tea. Enjoy fika. And truthfully, it might be fika. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but that's how you spell it. <laughs> I'm sure they'll understand. <laughs> we, whenever go, we go over, it's like, uh, is it fika, fika, fika? Yeah, and if you get someone from the south, I mean, geez, who knows what that's going to come out like. Yeah, who knows? All right, you're doing great. Okay. All three countries in Scandinavia share one feature in their flags. Name that feature. A, the Iron Cross, B, King's Cross, C, Celtic Cross, or D, the Nordic Cross. I mean, it's a cross, and they're Nordic countries, so I'm guessing the Nordic Cross. <laughs> You're doing amazing! It's the Nordic <laughs> Cross! <laughs> I feel like I'm on... Wait, wait, don't tell me. This is really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Denmark, Sweden, and Norway all use the Nordic Cross in their symbolism, and there are their flags. Awesome. Okay, moving on. Here we go. Scandinavia is comprised of which countries? I mean, all of them? 
So actually, this one's tricky because people argue about it. And it's, it's, it's actually officially Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. However, the heritage is as such and the culture is shared as such that people often include Iceland and Finland. But there are, there are quite some heated debates on social media and on, in articles about what it is. So that is, I mean, I don't even know if they know it right. But this is what Wikipedia says. And does the wiki ever lie? I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but in the spirit of being inclusive, I will say, yes, if you want to be Scandinavian, sure. If you're sure. Finland and Iceland, I will accept you as Scandinavian. That's right. Great. All right. So which Scandinavian country is known as the land of fairy tales? Is it A, Denmark, B, Sweden, or C, Norway? Um, I will Go with Denmark because that's where Hans Christian Andersen's from. So I'm going to say Denmark. <laughs> this is entirely due to national treasure Hans Christian Andersen. He is notable for works as The Little Mermaid, The Emperor Has No Clothes, The Ugly, Ugly Duckling, The Steadfast Tin, I Wrote Tyne, Forgive Me for Spelling, and The Princess and the Pea. And he was actually paid a stipend as a living national treasure until he died. Pretty crazy. Yeah. All right, you won yes. Game of Gloves! <laughs> and because you've been jet-setting for such a long time since you were a little kid, you have won a jet-setting pin, which Ooh, is yay. some Travel Radio yes. Podcast swag, and I will send that in the mail. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> that was kind of a dumb but fun game, right? Like, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, it's not dumb. I mean, so... Me and a group of my friends have been doing trivia, and we just finished up a five-week trivia tournament, and we won first place last night. Oh, man, so you're good. So the entire tournament, first place last night. I was in Quiz Bowl in high school, so I'm putting all this trivia to use, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. So then now that you've graciously played along with me, I want to hear um, your top three reasons for visiting Scandinavia. I will start off with one of my top reasons and pre-COVID, I don't think this was one of my top reasons, but in Denmark, there is this concept called Huga and it's H-Y-G-G-E. Okay. And the concept is generally centered around contentment and happiness. And so in the U.S., we're so constantly, you know, hustling and working super hard, going for the next goal and the next goal. And a lot of people pride themselves on, oh, I only slept four hours last night or, oh, oh, I pulled an all nighter. But in Denmark, it's not like that at all. They of course work, but it's more like, oh, okay, well I finished my work. I don't have to stay, you know, mm -hmm. until the end of the day, I can leave work early because I finished everything. I'm just going to go to grab a coffee with a friend, or I'm just going to go ride my bike in the city, it's just the general sense of being happy with what you have and where you are. And I feel like I need to practice that. Mm -hmm. And I want to go to Denmark to actually be in an area where everyone feels that way. It's interesting. I wonder how you could, just being like a tourist and having limited time, how you could just quickly kind of get immersed into that. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just, you know, we're all able to work remotely so so much more easily now. Maybe yeah. that's just the culture you choose to submerge yourself in when you go to do your, if you if you go to do a work way. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, um, you know, tried to create that kind of space in my house. Mm -hmm. We've been doing some reno renos in the house. And so um, we have this one new space and I purposely made it like a little cozy corner mm -hmm. for me to just like read a book, you know, turn on like my little cool Christmas decoration that I keep up like 365 because <laughs> it's a really a cute Christmas. like light up Christmas tree. Yeah. It's like a wooden Christmas tree. So I lit it up and a little candle and a cozy blanket and I'm just like reading a book and it's just being cozy and happy. And it's just like, this is my self care time. So nice. I'm trying to create a little bit of that mindset without going over to Denmark. Cause I can't right now. I know. I know you said <laughs> at one point that you even wanted to maybe move there. So this is, yeah, this is a strong I mean, interest. It is. And I was looking up places I could rent in Copenhagen and, you oh, know, man. a lot of other things. And it's just something where if you are in the destination, I think you can truly experience Mm -hmm. what that means versus trying to figure it out on your own. And, yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with figuring out your own version of Huga, but it'll be nice to, to feel it in destination. 
I, I have this. I'm, I have a business coach that I'm working with now. His name is Dave Meltzer. I don't know if you know him, but um, the suspicion is that uh, the movie Jerry Maguire is about him, or or that he managed Jerry Maguire. Anyway, he's he's this sports guy, but he kind of breaks down his his. He says, "I don't have work. I just have activity. I have activity. I get paid for. Mm-hmm. I have activity. I don't get paid for." And he's like, and it makes it a lot because he wants his activities to be pleasurable. So if his work doesn't please him, he doesn't do it you know and he, anyway because i don't know work implies i don't know what does he say like guilt or dread or a grind and he yeah. doesn't want to he doesn't want to work that way so that's interesting i'm gonna mention that to him next week on our coaching call he'll he'll enjoy that yeah i mean i do love what i do obviously which is why i'm in it and still in it after all this stuff with covid has happened <laughs> you're doing great um, it, yeah. So, but sometimes, you know, with everything, and I feel like even the guy who manages Jerry Maguire would feel like he'll have to do something where it's not always like rainbows and butterflies. There will be yeah. high stress moments yes, for him, will. but yes, he'll still love it because, you know, you just have to love the stress that you <laughs> deal it. with. And everybody's going to have stress. Pick your yes. stress and love mm-hmm. it. That's right. <clears throat> so let's go to number two, your top number two reason for visiting Scandinavia. The scenery. Um, I am a sucker for mountainous views and, um, you know, a mixture of like mountains and sea and river. And between the three countries, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, there's so much you can see. And there is one itinerary in Norway that a lot of first timers in Norway do. It's called Norway in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. And it takes you through so many of the different um, regions of Norway from like the mountains outside of Oslo to like the fjords near Bergen. And so I I really do love that feeling mainly because I live in a place, I mean, people vacation in Florida um, and I feel so spoiled to be able to live in a place where people vacation with the beach and stuff. So I feel like personally, I'm always looking for that different experience than what I usually have at well, home. It's, it's crisp. It's a different kind of light. It's like that white blue light. It's different yeah. than you have. And I would imagine that because I've lived that far north and, you know, in elevations, I imagine there's not a lot of bugs, whereas you are just oh my like goodness, yes. biodiverse <laughs> to the max. So yeah. yeah. I mean, you step out for a second, like I step out to let my dog out and oh my God, I have three mosquito bites. So yeah, the lack of bugs is always nice. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. My allergies are just kicking off something fierce here. I same, apologize. Same. <laughs> I took my medicine too, and it just doesn't seem to matter. Um, so it's not the Rona, folks. It's allergies. You know that because it's wet. Anyway, gross. So what about your third reason for wanting to visit Scandinavia? Um, I love the fact that you can see so many different things in just a short period of time. And I always... I have a focus on Denmark because for some reason I'm like stuck on Denmark. I just, I think that's going to be the first place I want to go to, you know, in Europe once Mm -hmm. everything opens up. Mm -hmm. Um, But the country of Denmark, you can pretty much see within like a five hour drive time, like the whole thing, you can drive the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And within the country itself, People don't know this, but they grow wine in Denmark. You know, people think hmm. Denmark is too cold to grow any wine, but the weather is really mild and there are vineyards in Denmark. Oh, wow. So you can go and visit that. And there are these inns in the countryside. And I believe all of them have the word crow in it, K-R-O. Mm-hmm. And way back in history, I don't know the dates, but back when Denmark had like a king that ruled. hmm he would travel throughout the country to visit, you know, the different towns and everything. And he was so um, frustrated that there weren't accommodations suit suited for a king mm-hmm. with like food and lodging and all that stuff. So he's yeah. like, we're going to establish a certification system. Different oh, wow. lodgings can, um, you know, meet the standards of being good enough for a king. And so these are still available in the country for people to stay in. And many of these inns have Michelin star restaurants. They're not huge hotels. They're like maybe a small farm or whatever it is. But it's crazy to think that you can have an experience like that in a country as small as Denmark. Um, And, you know, if that's not cool enough for you, you can go 
they call it oyster safaris. It's oh. on the <laughs> West Coast in a okay. national park. You can okay. hire a guide who will take you along the shore. You'll just pick oysters and you can eat them right there. And the oysters cost you zero dollars. You just have to pay for a guide. So, um, you know, some guides go all out. They can make a little grill from like the rocks there and bring champagne. Or if you don't want that, you can just eat them raw there. That's amazing to me amazing. that you can just go out there and go on an oyster safari. Yeah, that's wild. Hey, these are three amazing reasons. And I have to say that every time you're on the podcast, it just solidifies to me like the value of a travel advisor. You are mm -hmm. well-researched, you're passionate, and I appreciate it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to throw in about Scandinavia before we wrap up this little mini episode? Oh my God. There's so many, but I will just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> otherwise we're going to be chatting for hours. There's so much to see and do. So much. All right. Give us your contact information one more time. Um, my website is getoutcustomtravels.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. The handle is at getoutcustomtravels, or you can reach me via email, Teresa at getoutcustomtravels.com. Awesome. Well, thanks for letting me experiment on you. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. And I love showing off my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job. You did a really good job. I don't Thank know who you. else would be like, I'm going to surprise you and make it live. Let's do it. <laughs> Press record. So I, I thank you for your time. And um, I'll be sending your little pin out in the mail very shortly because you thank earned you. it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. This is Megan Chapa of the Travel Radio Podcast saying thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And of course, if you subscribe or review to either my podcast or the Tin Lounge, the Tin Lounge, yes. Yeah, Find me on the Tin Lounge with my yeah. colleague, Corrine. That's right. It helps. It tells the bean counters that something is happening. It's worth listening, and it promotes it to more people. And especially in my podcast, I believe that you know I can really change people's lives by giving them a voice in the travel industry and giving them a new trajectory by leveraging this audience. And Teresa's podcast is awesome for news, travel industry news. So check those out. All right. That's all. <laughs> Awkward <laughs> goodbye. Megan out. Bye. Bye. <laughs>